Okay, uh, welcome back, uh, everyone. We are looking at foundations for prayer. Um, we have been dwelling on the subject of intimacy earlier, uh, or prior to that, we discussed about the nature of God. Um, and we've been saying that having a strong relationship with God uh, is a necessity for an effective prayer life. Now, what are some things that can hinder us or what are some things that can interfere with an intimate relationship with God? Or what are, what are some challenges that you face when you want to have a strong relationship with God? You can share from your own experience. Okay, Charles is saying sin, sin, distractions. Um, Lucy's answer. What, what uh, is your like? What are some things that you find difficult when you want to have a close relationship with God? Work, correct, busy schedule, tiredness, right? It happens to some of us. We uh, think that, okay, morning, I couldn't spend quality time with God, but I will make more time in the evening. But it's so busy, right? You have to do so many things. By the end of the day, you're tired. Then you're not able to spend that kind of time which you intended to do. So busyness is, uh, a, a, yeah, it. That can be a challenge. Anything else that uh, hinders us? OK, somebody here says, uh, prioritizing other works, taking God for granted. OK, so when we, we yeah, it happens. And uh, you know, I, I, at least I should be honest, where sometimes, like in the um, you know early years when uh, I was developing my relationship with the Lord, I used to feel like, okay, it's okay, God understands. Hey, I don't have time. I have, to, I have to go to college on time. I have to do all these assignments. I couldn't spend time. God understands. We take God for granted. And we think everybody else we have to be prompt with, right? So yeah, that's, that's a problem. We don't prioritize God. Uh, then not studying the word of God. All right, yeah, we don't give God's word any importance. We say, okay, if I learn something, I learn something. But we don't have intentionally made, uh, we, we have not made time intentionally to study God's word. That also will hinder our intimacy with God because we want to understand the nature of God. We want to understand the purpose of God, the will of God. Okay, we use all those terms to know what God wants. So yes, that's true. Uh, okay, forget our priorities or uh, having our own thoughts. Uh, okay, somebody, uh, uh, Eric, Eric says um, procrastination. Procrastination means I'll do it later. I'll do it later. It right? happens to us, especially when we have to study for an exam. They would have given us one month time. Prepare yourself. Okay, finish the textbook. Read all the questions and answers. Four weeks, we'll say, ah, I have a lot of time. Then only three weeks left, two weeks left, one week left, one day left, one night left. Right? That's when students start studying. They're like, tomorrow morning is the exam, I have to read. And parents are thinking they're working very hard, studying whole night because whole month they didn't study. Right? What happened? Procrastination. Tomorrow, tomorrow, later, later, later. Same thing we could do with God. And we say, later, God, I'll come. I'll, I'll be there. OK, I have an appointment. I'm coming. Wait, wait. God is waiting for us. But we are not making the time. Right? So procrastination is an issue. Then uh, lack of faith or doubt in him and his promises. Yeah, so somewhere we are not convinced or our faith is weak. Okay? Because of that also, we are not spending time with God, intimacy with God. What about lack of discipline? Okay, we don't discipline ourselves. Sometimes we have discipline in certain matters. 
uh, we say, okay, I have to exercise. Whatever happens, I have to exercise. There are people who will exercise no matter what, right? But same kind of discipline when it comes to the word of God. I have to spend time with God's word. I have to pray. No discipline. That we will leave. And all the other things we will give attention to. I have to meet my friend. I have to be on the phone call with so-and-so. But what about spending time with God? That's not a priority. So we haven't developed discipline when it comes to the word of God. And we are saying, whatever happens, I have to spend time with God. I have to read the Bible. I have to pray. Right. So when it becomes a part of our daily schedule, then we don't miss it. So lack of discipline is a problem. Um, uh, then we, we said, uh, somebody said sin. Okay. Uh, so in our relationship with God, we want to come close to God, but somewhere we have something known as sin consciousness. Sin consciousness means that when I come in prayer, somewhere in my heart, I feel God will not listen. You know, I'm so sinful. Everybody else is better than me. You know, everybody else so holy they are. God won't listen to my prayer because I'm, you know, whatever. We can list it out. I'm lazy. I'm dishonest. I'm this. I'm that. So in our heart, we have a feeling about ourselves like that. And even when we come out of prayer, we don't feel like God heard us. Isn't it? So what's the problem? I have sin consciousness, meaning I have not understood that Jesus has washed away my sins on, you know, through the shedding of his blood on the cross of Calvary. My identity in Christ is new. I am a child of God. I am an heir of the kingdom. You know, I am blessed. I am victorious. Uh, so I'm not understanding all these things. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. Um, I am triumphant. I am healed. I am delivered. The Bible tells us that Jesus has done so much. I am a new person. When I come in prayer to God, I'm actually a new person. God is eager to hear my prayer. But what is happening? My faith in who I have become in Christ is still so weak that somewhere in my mind, I feel the Father will not hear me. The Son will not hear me. The Holy Spirit will not talk to me. Because I am conscious about my own sin. I have still not received complete forgiveness for maybe whatever has happened, whatever we have done. So sin consciousness will also keep us away. We want to come close to God, but it's not happening, isn't it? Because of what we believe about ourselves. So how can we change this? You spend time in the word of God that says you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So when I spend time, what happens? The way I look at myself begins to change on the basis of the word of God. And I can understand I am forgiven. You know, the father loves me. In fact, the Bible says, you know, uh, oh, what manner of love the father has lavished on us that he has called us his own children. So the heavenly father, the way he loves us is he calls us his own children. Isn't it? He doesn't give uh, only the, the kind of love that he gave Jesus. We know how Jesus was accepted by the Father. But the Bible tells us the Father accepts you the way he accepts Jesus. That's mind-blowing. But that is what the Word of God teaches us. But as believers, we are caught up in sin consciousness. We don't understand our identity in Christ. Now what happens? It keeps us away from God. Somewhere we try to run away, like how Adam and Eve, you know, when the, uh, God came in the evening and he was calling Adam, where are you? He was hiding because I can't talk to God. I made a mistake, right? There is that sense of shame. But when we recognize who we are in Christ, we can overcome all that. We can receive the forgiveness of the cross and draw closer to God. So sin consciousness will also keep us away from God. Okay, uh, We need to remember that. And then busyness, uh, lack of discipline, even certain heart conditions. Heart conditions means uh, when I have anger, when I have lust, when I have, uh, you know, some of those, the Bible calls them works of the flesh, works of the flesh, anger, jealousy. So many things are there inside my heart, right? Even then, I cannot fully give my heart to God. 
because that is hindering my relationship with god so we got to deal with these things when we deal with these things we can establish a strong relationship with god sometimes we may even have um emotional issues that we face so what are these emotional issues um there's a spirit of heaviness meaning feeling sad all the time now feeling sad sometimes it's normal but when we are constantly feeling like it's it's like a weight and and the bible says that you know sometimes these are spiritual things like there is a spirit of heaviness it just rests on you even though you want to feel happy and not feeling happy because there's a spiritual oppression of a spirit of heaviness or there can be confusion in our minds right so there are a lot of spiritual influences of this kind that can stop us from having a deep relationship with god so we can check our own lives and and see hey what's happening you know why am i so anxious why am i so sad all the time why am i so confused all the time why is it that i'm not able to understand god's word maybe there are matters that we have to deal with in the area of our emotions uh yeah, we we can pray we can break the hold of those spirits right and uh experience deliverance from those matters but sometimes it's not spirits sometimes they may be our own thinking patterns so uh, we would need to spend time in god's word to renew our minds or even you know certain times counseling when you're not able to come out of it maybe you can talk to a godly person a good professional counselor to break free from these patterns to overcome these patterns so that when you are uh, you know normal in the area of your emotions then you can even relate to god better okay so these are all uh, matters that will help us relate better to god okay so uh, thank you everyone for the answers I, i see some answers on the chat now let's move on the third foundation for effective prayer is to understand the redemptive heart of god okay redemptive heart of god god's heart is redemptive in nature now just to explain it okay i'm, I'm just giving you an example uh this is my phone imagine that i drop my phone okay and it breaks how many five pieces it breaks in five pieces okay now what is wh- what happens after that you'll all feel sad for me oh so sad ma'am broke her phone and what is she going to do she has to buy a new phone but you see the concept of redemption is that something that has moved away from the original that is being restored back to the original so imagine with me now if the phone comes back together on the table okay all of you will be shocked right but that is redemption meaning whatever is broken is now restored that is bringing it back to its original identity so when we study about the nature of god we see that god is very interested in bringing things back to the original intention or the design or the identity so in the garden of eden what happened man sinned the earth was corrupted with sin right so if god's nature was um uh, very judgmental he would have said leave it these people deserve it now i am not going to help you you figure it out if there is death and destruction and calamity it's not my problem god could have done that but we see that god's nature is redemptive so what did god do he did not leave us in our sinful state but he sent jesus christ to do what redeem meaning whatever is broken whatever is destroyed whatever is ruined you know whatever is a mess he's bringing it back to its original design we lost our authority we lost our dominion but what did jesus do give them back their authority give them back their dominion he restored us back 
That's what Jesus came to do. Why did Jesus come? He came to redeem us. But to redeem us, there was a need for a ransom. Ransom means a price to be paid. So uh, let's take, for example, you know, somebody is in the prison. We know the concept of bail, right? What do people do? Okay, somebody is in the prison. We want to bring them out. There is a provision to bring them out. A price has to be paid, right? They, they call it bail or something like that. Then the person comes out. So a price has to be paid to restore, isn't it? So in the same way, when you look at uh, what God has done for the world, if you look at the Old Testament and you know the, the principles in there, we will notice that there was always a, a sacrificial lamb. There were sacrifices. Uh, there was some price which was paid for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus became that ultimate price. He paid through his own body, his own blood. And what did he do? He redeemed us. So the original condition in which he wanted us to live, we lost it. But we are restored now because God is a redeemer. He did not want us to remain. What does the Bible say? While we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. So God is a redeemer. God is a restorer. If you look at the Israelites, uh, there was something known as the year of Jubilee. Okay, so in that year of Jubilee, um, uh, slaves would be set free. God wanted freedom for people. So every year in there, you will see uh, a principle or a promise or something which reveals that God is someone who desires freedom, restoration, redemption. Think about the life of Ruth. Okay, Ruth, she had nobody. Her husband died and her relatives died and she was not even from uh, the uh, lineage of, you know, the, the Israelites. But she was a Moabitess. But she came with Naomi. And what do you see in the life of Ruth? Somebody who had nothing. God restored her life back. Isn't it? So all this is painting a picture of God for us in the Bible, that he's a redeemer, restorer. Whenever he sees loss, he wants to restore it back into fullness. Okay. Whenever he sees destruction, he wants to bring beauty from ashes. So that's the kind of God we serve. So when we pray, we must remember the redemptive heart of God. So how can we apply this? We may look at a person who is uh, so far away from God. Okay, and uh, we can judge that person and say things like, oh, no, God also will not protect you. God will not save you. You're so far away from God. But when we look at the redemptive heart of God, we recognize that God is a, the God who saves to the uttermost. Even if someone's gone so far away from God, God can restore their life, bring them back, right? Make them as if. The past doesn't exist. Is it possible with God? It is, right? It is. But the person obviously needs to cooperate with God for things like this to happen. But God wants to restore. God wants to redeem. Maybe you know, family relationships are broken and uh, we wonder, hey, can this family uh, be peaceful? Can it be united again? Uh, can we um, still... Uh, regard each other, be respectful towards each other. So much has been spoken, so much has been done. You know what? Yes, God wants healing. God wants restoration. God wants relationships to be, um, uh, you know, strengthened once again. Maybe marriage relationships between husbands and wives. Uh, so much is going on. Is it possible for God to restore? Yes, all this is possible because we are depending on the nature of God and the love of God that has no limits and the love of God has no bounds. So uh, I want for us uh, somebody to read Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39. Uh, if anyone has the Hindi version also, if you uh, don't mind, could you please read it? Uh, yeah, so Romans 8. 38 and 39. 
Romans 8, 38, 39. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you well, Ketrude. Please go ahead. Okay. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for reading uh, that wonderful passage. It reminds us, no matter what we go through, God's love for us is so great and nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Okay. Um, uh, does anyone have the Hindi version and would like to read? क्योंकि मुझे निश्चय है कि कोई बात हमें अभी कभी मसीह के प्रेम से अलग नहीं कर सकती न मृत्यु और न जीवन स्वर्गदूत भी नहीं नरक की सारी शक्तियां भी हमसे परमेश्वर का प्रेम दूर नहीं कर सकती है आज के लिए हमारे भय कल के लिए हमारी चिंताएं या जाना कहीं हम हो चाहे ऊंचे आकाश पर या सबसे गहरे सागर में कोई भी बात हमें परमेश्वर के प्रेम से जिसको प्रभु यीशु ने हमारे लिए अपनी मृत्यु के द्वारा प्रकट किया अलग नहीं कर सक, सकेगी आमेन आमेन थैंक यू थैंक यू परमिता सो वी सी हियर दैट गॉड्स लव फॉर अस इज इनक्रेडिबल एंड देयरफॉर व्हेन वी प्रे फॉर पीपल वी मे फाइंड देम इन चैलेंजिंग सिचुएशंस वी कैन प्रे फॉर रेस्टोरेशन एंड रिडेम्पशन which would be right by what scriptures are telling us so we don't pray and say uh, this matter cannot be resolved or uh, you know this relationship cannot be restored this person cannot be healed because when we look at scripture we see that this is the god who turns things around isn't it maybe right now they find themselves in a situation that looks like the end of the road that's why god wants us to pray we begin to pray and say god um, you your redeeming work let it be seen in this person's life you do the impossible in this person's life we ask for miracles in this person's life okay so we can pray prayers like this and they are valid because we go by the redemptive nature of god all right so remember that uh, so it's so easy for us to uh, just you know uh, uh, look at someone and and uh, say that there is no hope for that person but when we co-labor with god on the basis of his redemptive nature we find that you know all things are possible and there are so many testimonies we know like we've heard testimonies of uh, parents who are praying for their children who uh, don't go to church or who don't uh, value the word of god they don't read their bible they're in all kinds of wrong activities but we've seen that god has worked in their lives and you know he's he's brought them out uh, why you know why why are such things possible because there are people who are praying aligned to the redemptive heart of god we've seen marriages that we're not working out people you know husband and wife against each other but when we pray what happens we're releasing the power uh, of of this redemptive work of god upon people's lives and we have seen you know, marriages restored uh, so things happen in line with what god wants to do in people's lives so we can bless them we can um, stand in the gap we can intercede for people and we can serve them see jesus has already done the work of uh, redemption on the cross so you and i need not you know hang on the cross or shed our blood or make any such sacrifices because the work that jesus did it's the finished work okay when he hung on the cross he said it is finished 
right? It is finished. That means he has completed the work once and for all. So what is the labor that you and I have to engage in? Prayer. So when we say that we have to work, what, what are we doing? In prayer and intercession, it is an effort. It is a labor that you and I have to do in order for us to release the power of God in that person's life. So always remember to co-labor with God, especially to see the redemptive power of God work in people's lives. Okay. So I remember this one story uh, uh, of a preacher. Uh, he is no more, but uh, he, he was quite instrumental in one of the revivals, the Brownsville revival. Um, and it is said about his life that uh, he was a drug addict. Okay, and he he uh, was so far away from God, and uh, uh, everyone who looked at him said, "This person can never change, because he's he has wasted his life, he's wasted his body by using you know substances, and he just doesn't listen, uh, even if people try to tell him you know what uh, what the word of God is, but in his life there's something amazing happened, and that is." Um, uh, primarily through a praying mother uh, his mother always prayed for him and uh, you know she believed that it's okay even if this is the situation nothing is impossible for god god can change him god can work in his life so uh, she kept praying for many years she kept praying she had very painful experiences of you know seeing her son in in that situation of being you know um, intoxicated or or uh, uh, not in his conscience you can imagine how difficult it must be for a parent to see their children even though they know what is right they are going in the wrong path but the story is such that uh, you know at one point he encountered god he encountered the love of God and it completely changed his life. Okay, uh, To a point where he became one of the evangelists uh, of this particular revival. And um, uh, I mean, in those revivals, many people got saved. He would just give a call, altar call, we say, right? Uh, when he would say, okay, how many of you want to receive Christ? Uh, and uh, people would come running. Like there'll be no space in the front. Like people would just come running. So I, I've heard testimonies like this. Uh, and I just want to, I mean, I'm not trying to promote any person or any experience or any revival. But my simple point is that uh, a changed life through the prayer of a, a praying mother, right? Uh, there are testimonies that, you know, similar testimonies that I've heard uh, from others as well. So my point that I'm making is more about God about how God can work when we pray, how God can work when we uh, don't give up. Maybe there are people who are far away from God in our own families, uh, in our own friend circles, and somewhere we give up, but God doesn't give up, right? So let's continue to pray. Uh, pray the redemptive heart of God upon the people. Okay, how else should we pray? Uh, we can pray on the basis of the promises of God. So whatever God has revealed in his word as a promise for us, we can hold on to that promise and we can pray. So that is also an effective way of praying. Uh, when we uh, say that, uh, like uh, in Matthew 6, 10, Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let's imagine. Okay, now um, there's a family situation where the, in the house there's a lot of fighting going on, there's a lot of misunderstanding, there's a lot of confusion. Uh, in that situation, if we pray on the ba basis of this verse, what does it say? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in heaven, there is peace. In heaven, there is joy, there is happiness, there is goodness because... There is no evil in heaven. So what are we praying in that family situation? God, let the peace which is there in heaven, let it be there in my home. Lord, let the goodness of heart which is there in heaven, let it be in all our relationships. Lord, let the joy of God be in all our relationships. Is that a valid prayer? Can I pray like yes. that? Yes. yes, I can pray like that. Because God has given us the standard of his word. 
it says i can pray ask for the kingdom of god to come can i pray for god's kingdom to come in my city when you know there is so much of evil there is so much of um, corruption different things yes i can pray lord yes i know these things exist but you know i bind the spirits that work uh, uh, against you but i speak a release of the kingdom of god let righteousness uh, let justice rule and reign in my city it is valid because i am praying on the basis of the word of god so this is an effective way to pray where we take promises from scripture and we pray so even for our own lives something as simple as uh, you know scripture jeremiah 29:11 which we quote often for i know the plans i have for you plans to prosper you not to harm you to give you a hope and a future so can i pray that god um uh, that i will experience your blessing and uh, i will have a good future yes i can pray like that because god has promised in his word isn't it so on the basis of the promises of god i can pray and those prayers are effective uh, psalm 119 verse 89 says that the word the word of the lord is settled in heaven meaning god is not going to change his word so here on the earth many things are changing you know seasons are changing uh, people are changing leadership is changing environment is changing but in heaven one thing which is settled is the word of god right uh, meaning the standard of god's word is set it's not going to change god is not going to change his mind so i can be very confident and i can say god you have said in your word you know you you are this and i i'm claiming in the name of jesus i want to see it in my life i want to see it in my family so for our prayer one of the things we can do is maybe you can have a notebook in that notebook you can write promises for example wisdom if i want wisdom uh, james chapter 1 verse 5 says if anyone lacks wisdom let him ask god who gives uh, abundantly he will he will give it to him right but let him not uh, doubt in his heart so on the basis of james 1 verse 5 i can say god you said in your word that if i need wisdom i can ask you i am asking you you said you're going to give it abundantly i receive it by faith in the name of jesus this is how we pray pray on the basis of the promises of god then we are confident we are very sure god has not changed his mind there's no other verse which contradicts you know james 1:5 he said he'll give wisdom he will give us wisdom his holy spirit is the spirit of wisdom he is the spirit of revelation spirit of understanding spirit of fear of the lord so if i am lacking all these things in my life i can say holy spirit impart in my life give me wisdom give me understanding give me the knowledge of the lord give me the fear of god so that i can walk in a righteous way you got it all these promises are there in the bible just take it lay a hold of it and begin to pray and say god you said i claim it it will be revealed in my life so this is the way in which we can pray on the basis of the promises of god all right uh, let's keep moving forward uh, but you know again if you just want to interrupt me uh, to clarify something that should be all right so moving on to point number 5 here what is a good foundation for prayer partner with the holy spirit okay uh, partner with the holy spirit now we already said that we are called for fellowship with the holy spirit so the holy spirit can help us when it comes to prayer now we may feel that i'm not so strong in prayer i'm not able to continue you know how it is um uh, people say that i can't pray for one hour generally if one hour time is given what happens if you put the clock people can pray maybe 10 minutes already prayer is over another 50 minutes left what to do now i'm not able to what is this i can't do one hour prayer but you see we can take the help of the holy spirit because the bible says zechariah 12:10 it says 
the spirit of grace and supplication talking about the holy spirit we have this description of the holy spirit it says spirit of grace and supplication okay which means that the holy spirit gives us the ability he strengthens us to pray so when i'm praying i need not be alone feeling weak and say i can't do it yes we can't do it but holy spirit is there and he is the spirit of grace and supplication so i can say holy spirit help me and then holy spirit will help me he will aid me he will strengthen me in prayer all right so for us to pray effectively we can pray with the support of the spirit of god who is the spirit of grace and supplication okay uh, also we are told that the holy spirit is somebody who helps us in our weaknesses uh, romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27 i request uh, someone to go ahead and read it aloud please am shall i read yes yes uh, uh, brother pankaj go ahead romans chapter 8 verses 26 to 27 likewise the spirit also help in our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of god amen amen thank you thank you for reading that so notice even here it's talking about the holy spirit and it says that the spirit helps in our weakness for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered so it is talking about praying in the spirit Okay, we have an entire chapter on that. We will go to it and we will uh, understand it in depth. But right now, what I want us to know is there are times when words cannot express the um, you know the questions that we have in our heart. Words cannot express the gratitude of our hearts. Words cannot express the grief. words cannot express the pain words cannot express the concern we don't have the words even in prayer we may find that we are not able to express what to do now the bible tells us the holy spirit helps us in our weaknesses when we do not know what to pray right what does he do he himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered so it means that there are times in our prayer life where we can just shift or switch to praying in tongues now we may wonder what am i saying i don't even know what i'm saying don't worry about it because we are taking the help of the holy spirit to say or to pour out things that words cannot capture words in our own lang language cannot capture there are so we will see later on that when we pray in the spirit we are praying beyond our understanding what are we praying we'll get to that later on but the point here is holy spirit can help us he can even help us pray beyond our thinking beyond our knowledge beyond our understanding okay and uh, these prayers are very powerful because later on verse 27 he says he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of god so the holy spirit always knows the will of god okay so because he knows the will of god every prayer which we pray in the spirit is in the will of god we don't have to worry what am i praying is it aligned to the to the will of god you never have to worry when you pray in the spirit because 
as per what scriptures are telling us the holy spirit makes intercession for the saints according to the will of god so uh, we can pray in the spirit we can pray aided by the holy spirit so at times when maybe you're not able to express in intelligent language it's okay to pray in the spirit but you know paul also tells us he tells us you pray with with your understanding but you also pray in the spirit do both right god gives us the opportunity to do both it's not that one should replace the other but we can do both and we can receive the help of the holy spirit uh, even that enables us to pray effective prayers because we are partnering with the holy spirit okay then uh, point 7 here is pray aligned to who we are in christ identity okay your your first session so based on who we are in christ pray prayers you um, recall at church what do we do usually every sunday hold your bibles hold your bibles high up in the air repeat this after me this is god's word this is god speaking to me so we make a declaration what declaration do we say same thing who we are in christ i'm saved i'm healed i'm blessed i'm redeemed so on the basis of who i am in christ i pray you know if i make a prayer and say something like oh god i am so unworthy you know i am the worst sinner but i come into your presence is that theologically correct after what jesus has done if you are a believer is that correct if you say no you have to tell me why many of you did this why oh god i am the worst sinner i know you don't i i know that you know i cannot stand in your presence sounds very humble no sounds so humble but is it correct for a believer now nobody shaking their heads and <laughs> i'll point the question okay uh, we have uh, lucy and uh, getrud also saying no so uh, would you like to explain why because right. being a believer we are already saved we are already saved yes yeah correct uh, brother pankaj so that's the point uh, we are saved we are born again we are in christ jesus and the bible has so much to say about that when we're not expressing faith in who we have become in christ jesus uh, you know we are coming into god's presence lacking that truth okay and it doesn't make our prayer effective okay uh, andrew uh, I I see you want to say something please go ahead Could you please unmute yourself Andrew we can't hear you Okay Andrew I uh, still can't hear you all right um yeah maybe you could uh, type on the chat here uh, we'll move on so our position in christ uh, we need to pray on the basis of that and finally a life of surrender or dependence see when we pray what does that tell us about um you know our dependence on god so if if i know that i can do everything on my own then will i pray generally no right like if if i can handle something then i i might just want to uh, you know just do it why should you ask god but when we have a life of prayer it means that we are depending on god isn't it we are saying okay god uh, everything is from you everything is for you i'm depending on you my life is committed to you 
and uh, you lead me according to your purposes you lead me according to your will so i'm expressing my dependence on god uh, and so that shows that my life is surrendered to god isn't it uh, so that is also very important so practicing prayer separate from um, our understanding of who we are in christ or our life of surrender to god tell be a disconnect so if i'm really depending on god every day uh, i need to walk right with god you know walk righteously with god uh, and then when i pray what happens my prayers are effective think about people like saul right saul what was his what was his sin the the sin of saul rebellion or he went against god right rebellion god is saying one thing we are doing something else but at that point god said look obedience is better than sacrifice so walking in obedience walking surrendered to the lord uh, is what really mat matters to god and there are many scriptures which tell us that uh, you know the lord is far away from the wicked but he hears the prayer of the righteous meaning how i live my life will impact my prayers i can't just pray and live however i like because there is a connection so when i live righteously then my prayers are effective they are answered uh, there's one more uh, scripture here psalm 66 and verse 18 it says if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear meaning if i'm holding on to the wrong things sin unrighteousness in my heart and i'm saying god i'll pray i'll do all the activities i'll worship you know i'll fast god is saying look i can see your heart you can do all the activities but that cannot deceive god because he sees our heart and scriptures are telling us if i we have iniquity or if there is sin in my heart even if i pray it's like you know how you can imagine your prayer is going but it is hitting something and it's just coming back it's not reaching god because our life is not righteous you know our thinking is not righteous our choices are not righteous so a righteous life a surrendered life a life that depends on god is also very very important for us to have answers to prayer okay so with this i am going to stop for now um we can pray and close if there are no questions okay i request uh, somebody online to please uh, pray aloud um, kindly unmute and then pray please Okay is it okay brother pankaj if i ask you to pray yeah, just a few lines yeah please go ahead it's okay ma'am but my english is not so good <laughs> sorry uh it's okay ma'am but my english is uh, is not so good but still i'll pray yeah okay no problem yeah you can pray dear heavenly father i thank you in the name of our lord jesus christ that in your mercy and in your grace you have taught us this precious word from from your servant sister nancy i thank you for this father and everything which we have learned and which we have heard may remain in our heart not to be apart from our heart father yes father please please bless us through your mercy thank you heavenly father that you have heard my prayer and you have answered my prayer too in holy and precious jesus name i pray amen Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Brother Pankaj. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, everyone, thank you. for connecting to the class today. So uh, please remember to go through your notes to uh, refresh what we uh, are learning, and we will meet again next week. 
So, uh, bye for now. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.